this is no more appropriate for kids to sign out in the library than if their school were to offer porn movies in the library. Parents have the right to say, I don't want my child to come across material like this in this school. This is not an adult store. This is a school library. Welcome to my channel, Outspoken Samantha. If you are new here, welcome. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. If you're returning, welcome back. Thank you so much for the support. On my channel, I like to give my opinion and perspective on things that are happening today, things that I think actually matter to everyday people, especially those of us trying to raise kids in the insanity known as today's society. I do like to talk about current events and politics, and my perspective does tend to be more on the conservative side of things. Like this video, leave your thoughts in the comments below, and also share it with others. Be sure you are subscribed so that you can help me to grow this channel and hopefully reach more people that value logic, reason, and sanity. Also, be sure to find me on Rumble under Outspoken Samantha in the event that YouTube decides I have violated their communist, I mean, community standards and chooses to kick me off their platform forever. That being said, let's get into today's topic. As I'm sure many of you have seen, especially if you are a parent that has a child or children in the public education system, you've probably seen this movement of parents that have suddenly woken up and decided to do something about the material and the content that their kids are being exposed to in the classroom and in the school. I know that, you know, there's been a lot of stuff surrounding COVID that has just been really destructive, really detrimental to society. There's a lot of things that are coming to light um, about how COVID was handled and all these things. But one of the very, very few positive things that I can't think came from COVID was the fact that it gave parents a chance to actually see what our kids are learning, to look over their shoulder and be like, what is it you're reading there? What are you learning? You know, to have a closer look at the assignments they were given and the reading materials and the books and all of these things. And come to find out, not all of it was actually educational. And we've become more aware of the fact that there seems to be far too much activism, politics, personal agendas of teachers playing out in our schools and interrupting our kids' education. Precious time away from things like math and spelling and reading and writing. Um, and since then, it's been incredible to see that parents have become more active active than ever in the last few years, getting involved in schools, connecting with their child's teachers, reviewing the assignments that their kids are being given, and getting to know the school board and attending these meetings and holding people accountable for the things that they are trying to put in front of children. And with all of these things we've been discovering, parents have made themselves heard over what is and is not appropriate for kids to be learning. Depending on the grade level and age, is it interfering with the things that they're supposed to be learning in school? Are these things that should even be in the school setting? And it's amazing that we keep having to have this conversation, especially based on the things that teachers are trying to put in the schools. Like it's it's so far beyond inappropriate. Uh, it's baffling that we even, that as parents, we even have to be fighting with teachers about you can't put this in front of kids. Like nobody should be putting this in front of kids, not just teachers, but nobody across the board. We've let teachers in schools know that you don't get to just do whatever the heck you want. Like these are my kids. I am raising them. I bring them to you to get an education. And that doesn't mean that you have free reign. So part of the movement to clean up classrooms, uh, parents have been organizing groups to go through the school libraries in their local community and pull things that are just not appropriate. They're scanning books for content that's not appropriate for the school setting not appropriate for these age groups and saying these need to go. These are not educationally beneficial. These are not uh, creating a positive learning environment for the school. And these are not giving my child things that are, you know, beneficial to their growth and development. So as a result, we've seen a lot of books pulled from school libraries. And I just I can't believe the fact that, you know, here in Texas, um, there have been hundreds of books that have been pulled, hundreds. So it just, it blows my mind. I mean, I can understand maybe finding one or two with inappropriate content, but it just goes to show how far this has gotten out of hand by the fact that we can find hundreds of books um, 
and you know they contain material that kids just shouldn't be seeing so the arguments from a, a favorite argument of the left is to accuse those of us that are trying to make sure that content is appropriate for schools um these left-wing activists they've gone into absolute hysterics comparing this to the book burning of the nazis in the 1930s um and funnily enough this is like the one time that they're actually concerned with free speech but i think it's important to understand you know what are the books that are being pulled what is in them and why are they being pulled because this is not about book burning this is burning this is not about censoring information or um you know wanting to only hone a specific set of values you know it's just about the fact that this is just not okay to give to kids we need to look at the books that are being pulled and what is in them and i do warn you i am not going to go into explicit detail um, about what is in a lot of these books i will do timestamps so that you can you know decide to listen to the content of all of them or just one or two of them you're going to get the idea I, I've, I've selected three um and i'll describe what's in them and go into as much de detail as i can but honestly if i were to put the content specifically, you know, verbatim, what is in these books. If I were to provide the images and the graphics that are in these books, I would get banned from YouTube. I would get kicked off this platform because it's not, an, it's not appropriate, but somehow these people seem to think it's appropriate for kids to come across in the library. The list that I found specifically, I was trying to find the most current list of some of the top the top books that are being banned right now. And this list comes from a Reader's Digest article. I'm just gonna the list the names. It says Gender Queer by Maya Co Kobebe, Lawn Boy by Jonathan Evison, All Boys Aren't Blue by George M. Johnson, Out of Darkness by Ashley Hope Perez, The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas, The Absolute True Diary of a Part-Time Indian by Sherman Alexi, Me and Earl by The Dying Girl, Me and Earl, by the Dying Girl by Jesse Andrews, The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison, This Book is Gay by Juno Dawson, Beyond Magenta by Susan Cucklin. Um, so that's just a couple of them. Like I said, I've selected three to go over. The number one book being pulled out of schools right now, and I have seen this book brought up in so many school board meetings, is the book Gender Queer. Um, Honestly, this book should never have been put in schools in the first place. Now, if you were to go on Amazon and read the description, it sounds fairly benign. Um, I <laughs> I would probably read it and be like, mm, I don't think that that's appropriate for the school setting. That's not what you need to be learning about in school. I'm just gonna read the product description so you know kind of how this book is being presented. Um, in 2014, Maya Kobebe, I don't know how to pronounce her last name, who uses AM air pronouns thought that a comic of reading statistics would be the last autobiographical comic E would ever write. At that at the time, it was the only thing E felt comfortable with strangers knowing about M. Now gender queer is here. Maya's intensely cathartic autobiography charts air journey of self-identity, which includes the mortification and confusion of adolescent crushes, grappling with how to come out to family and society, bonding with friends over erotic gay fan fiction, and facing the trauma and fundamental violation of pap smears. Started as a way to explain to our family what it means to be non-binary and asexual, gender queer is more than a personal story. It is a useful and touching guide on gender identity, what it means, and how to think about it for advocates, friends, and humans everywhere. You know, this is about uh, a transgender individual's, you know, their coming out story, kind of their life experiences. So clearly, you know, this is a very specific message towards, you know, it's okay if you're transgender. It's okay if you pick pronouns that are not, you know, in the binary sense. And so, it definitely has this, it's planning this idea in kids' minds already at a very impressionable age when they are still trying to figure out who they are. I've seen images from this book and they're images that I am just not comfortable putting on the screen. And if I did, like I said, I would probably be banned from YouTube. It's a graphic novel, meaning that the format of this book is in comic book style and the content gets very, very, very sexually explicit, involving sex toys and depictions of sex acts between teenagers that are not only described but there's pictures to go along with it. This is no more appropriate for kids to sign out in the library than if their school were to offer porn movies in the library. And parents have the right to say, I don't want my child to come across material like this in this school. This is not an adult store. This is a school library. Response from the activist left, people that think that this is appropriate for kids or, you know, who truly don't think that there should be any boundaries for what we put in schools at all. Um, you know, some of the tweets are insecure white Christians, the most pathetic population on the globe. America won't be healthy until addresses, it addresses its bigotry. 
you know, by relabeling it as a bigotry problem, we're not able to actually address what it is that parents are concerned about. And it labels parents as bigots and, you know, therefore people that should not be listened to. Unfathomable to them that as a parent, I don't want my child watching or reading adult entertainment or that as a teacher, you don't have the right to put this stuff in front of my kid. And it's not your job or your right to talk to my child about sexual orientation, sexual identities, gender, gender, None of it. It's not about targeting anyone. This is about your role as a teacher, as an educator, and my trust in you that this is a safe space that kids can go to without being exposed to things that child predators would expose them to. So next one is called Lawn Boy by Jonathan Evison. And the product description on Amazon says, for Mike Muniz, a young Chicano living in Washington state, life has been a whole lot of waiting for something to happen. Not too many years out of high school and still doing menial work and just fired from his latest gig as a lawn boy on a landscaping crew, he knows that he's got to be the one to shake things up if he's ever going to change his life. But how? In this funny, angry, touching, and ultimately deeply inspiring novel, novel best-selling author Jonathan Evison takes the reader into the heart and mind of a young man on a journey to discover himself, a search to find the secret to achieving the American dream of happiness and prosperity. That's the birthright for all Americans isn't it? If so, then what is uh, Mike Muniz's problem? Though he tries time and time again to get his foot on the first rung of the ladder to success, he can't seem to get a break. But then things start, then things start to change for Mike. And after a raucous, jarring, and challenging trip, he finds he can finally see the future and his place in it. And it's looking really good. So from the description, you would think, you know, if I were a teenager going to pull this book off the shelf and reading that, I'd be like, oh, this is an inspiring story of achieving the American dream and coming of age and just kind of this growth and development process and something that you know as a teenager I could relate to so and as a parent if you were to go on Amazon and read that you know you're doing your due diligence you're doing the research and you're looking up and you're thinking okay this this looks harmless this looks like a really great story you scroll down on Amazon you see people writing you know glowing reviews about this book and that it's you know it's just a wonderful story and that it's enlightening and uplifting and you know so you think that you're doing your homework and as a parent you're making sure that your kid is being something given something that's age appropriate and school appropriate come to find out this book has very 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 graphic descriptions of sexual acts in it not only that it describes an incestu incestuous relationship with this person and their sister and it describes sex acts between two 10 year old boys that they perform on each other these are fourth grade boys that it describes you know, the sexual things that they are doing to each other. You have got to be kidding me. So a mom whose son goes to Leander High School in Texas attended a school board meeting to stand up against this book being accessible in the school library. Her son signed this book out because he thought it was about a kid who gets a job mowing grass at Disneyland. So this mom went to the school board meeting to, to be like, hey, why is this in the school library? And she did go into detail about some of the content of the book, again, that I cannot read or I would get kicked off of YouTube. Um, but I'll link the article in the description box so you can read what it is that she said. But some of the things that she did say that she did point out um, are relevant and that I can share without getting kicked off. Um, she's, what sort of diversity are you intending to teach my child with material like this? In addition, I'll share with you the exceptional quality of vocabulary. I stopped counting on page 66 after 44 F's and SH words. The depravity of the content on the shelves in our schools cannot be mitigated with policy, said Berkman. She also asked, what sort of educational environment you think the plethora of sexually graphic books selections create for my children or for any child for that matter? I won't go into my fourth grade daughter, but we don't this is not a thing for fourth graders. Who normalizes sex acts between fourth graders? I'll tell you who, pedophiles. I think that's the question kind of at the root of this whole problem is what kind of an educational environment does this create? What is the academic benefit to making this available to students? How is this going to help them be successful, develop skills, work hard, set goals, and be a productive adult in society? You know how kids are turning out when they are engulfed in this stuff in schools when they're young? This is who they're becoming. And by the way, side note, 
the author of this book came out and said, yeah, this was never meant to be in the school setting. This was never meant to be in school libraries. The last book that I'm going to go over is called Beyond Magenta by Susan Cucklin. I, I picked this book because I hadn't heard as much about it. I've heard genderqueer and lawn boy brought up a lot, so I decided just to kind of pick randomly. So this one I selected. If you go to the product description on Amazon, it says author and photographer Susan Cucklin, Cucklin met and interviewed six transgender or gender neutral young adults and used her considerable skills to represent them thoughtfully and respectfully before, during, and after their personal acknowledgement acknowledgement of gender preference. Portraits, family photographs, and candid images grace the pages, augmenting the emotional and physical journey each youth has to take, or has taken. Each honest discussion and disclosure, whether joyful or heartbreaking, is completely different from the other because of family dynamics, living situations, gender, and the transition these teens make in the recognition of their true selves. It kind of has the same motivations and the biases as and the agenda of gender queer to put these ideas in kids' heads to influence them in a particular narrative um, and a particular ideology. But aside from all of that, there are things in the book that you would never know to expect until you're reading them. And in it, the adult describes themselves as performing sex acts when they were six years old. You heard that right, age six. And I came across this article from NPR saying that when the book was first released, it received positive reviews, but then it was challenged by conservatives. Um, and I think it's funny and strange at the same time that you would want to divide political parties that way and say that conservatives don't want you, don't want your kids reading books where it describes, you know, sex acts between 10 year olds or, you know, the sexual experiences of a six year old, which is just so problematic. And Democrats are the party of people that think this is okay. Not really how you want to divide things up. Um, because if that were me, I would be changing my voting registration immediately if, you know, I were voting Democrat and this is automatically what was associated with being, you know, part of that political side of the aisle. So that's just me. Just a little side note there. But those are just a few of the books on this list. And I know that there are far more out there. You know, I've only listed a few. There are more that are being brought up through the grassroots efforts of parents and families going through school libraries where their children attend. Like I said, hundreds of books with inappropriate content are being pulled from schools. Of course, like I said, one of the biggest arguments that the left likes to make that this is just like the book Burning uh, by the Nazis in the 1930s. And this narrative alone is just one of the many examples of why public schools don't te teach accurate history anymore because they want to teach this revision revisionist history to be able to create a narrative so that they can say things like conservative pulling these books from schools is just like when the Nazis burned books for before World War II and people will believe it. They won't know that it's a lie because they haven't been taught the truth. The books that parents are pulling now from schools, they're not banned from society. They're not being banned from bookstores. They're not being pulled from the internet. Nobody's going after these authors and nobody's trying to get rid of their existence. Nobody's doing that. This is just about the fact that this doesn't belong in a school period. We also have to consider what exposing kids to this stuff is doing. We used to be able to send our kids to school to foster creativity, to help the kids discover what it is that they're interested in learning, to learn all the basics of academics, but also to prepare them for adulthood because these are the next generation that are going to be leading society. Give them an idea of what they wanted to do for a career or, you know, what they wanted to pursue in life. And usually by the time a kid graduates high school, you know, whether they're really focused on what they want to do or at least least have an idea, they'll know if they're more artistic or if they think they'd be more interested in medicine or business or law or something more hands-on. They might not have it all figured out, but by then they at least have an idea of what they want to do. Now, with gender ideology and graphic sexual content being everywhere in schools, kids emerge convinced that they're victims and the only career that they have set their sights on is to be an activist or a protester. That's exactly what this stuff is meant to achieve. It's not to turn out a strong generation of young adults to build up society, to bring forth the new modern innovation, to be future business owners and job creators. It's to create a society of weak, crippled, confused adults who need government to take care of them. Taking kids and turning them from this into this. Turning them from this into this, from this to this. As I just highly encourage you to look at your kid and decide what material do you think is going to be beneficial to them? What is going to foster that growth that you see in your child, foster the interests that they have? 
and help them to achieve those goals, help them to be the best person that they possibly can be. I would encourage you to not allow them, you know, to participate in this agenda in this ideology to take on these materials and not allow them to be exposed to these things. And I know the left likes to justify it by saying, well, they're going to be exposed to it anyway. And that's true. You can't put your kids in a bubble and you can't protect them from everything. They are going to be exposed to things. But that is far different than intentionally putting it in front of them, than eliminating those boundaries or eliminating the safe space of you as a parent to be able to, you know, foster that environment of communication or pro providing context, having informed discussions where your interest is truly to help them grow and to understand the world around them. Whereas in the educational you know, environment with these activist teachers, they have one goal in mind, and that is to create a, a society of activists and protesters and people that you know are solely focused on this one thing and don't seem to be interested in making sure that kids have their, their sights set on any other goal. You know, this so much time and energy is being spent on this gender confusion and pronouns and making sure that society accepts this particular ideology and you know all of this time and energy that could be used on you know creating this next generation of business owners and entrepreneurs and innovators um it's being wasted it's you know all this energy could be used for that and it's being taken away from these kids so i encourage you to look at your kids and say you know i'm not going to allow you to participate in this at a young age obviously when you're older you can make more decisions about what you think makes sense and what it is that you want to participate in but as a kid these are the things that are going to help you become a healthy young adult let me know what your thoughts are uh, let me know if you were surprised by anything on this list or if you had never heard of these books. I would love to have a conversation and we will get more into this topic in future videos. Um, but I wanted to touch on these books and let parents know this is why these books are being pulled. It is not about bigotry. It is not about targeting groups. It is about protecting our kids and the fact that, you know, teachers seem to think that we don't have any rights, that we don't have a say what happens in those eight hours that our kids are in their care. And that is really alarming and parents need to stand up to it. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, like this video, leave a comment below. Also hit the notification bell so you can be notified every time I post a video. Also, be sure you are subscribed. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.